this is Laura. Um, today I am working on inking in um, two different dragonflies. Um, this work is on Strathmore watercolor paper and it's actually going to be it's two separate images. You can uh, very faintly see a line across the middle from where I'm going to separate them. So when I'm finished they will be um, photographed and made into uh, cards to print out. Um, so I'm using a, uh, I can't ever pronounce this right, Faber Castle, a Pit Artist pen. It's in black um, and it's India, an India ink pen, which I like because then I can go over this with uh, watercolor and it's not going to bleed everywhere. And it also doesn't bleed like an alcohol pen does into the paper and kind of spread. So I can get a really nice crisp line without worrying about it um, bleeding and extending past where I want it to be. So um, I'm just going to start covering up the uh, pencil lines that I have here. And typically what I'll do is... Um, go back in after I'm completely finished inking in the drawing and I've got a um, kneaded eraser around here somewhere and I will take that and kind of roll it and then roll over my pencil lines to get rid of them because that will get picked up and make my watercolors look kind of muddy so I don't like to um, leave any pencil marks if I can help it, uh, but that's just me. Everybody does a, a, a thing differently. Um, so I've got a reference photo on my computer that I'm kind of looking at because I'm a little OCD and I like to get um, all of the little cells for the dragonfly's wings as bright as I can. Um, they're kind of like a fingerprint and each dragonfly wing um, has a different arrangement of cells and then each different kind of dragonfly, um, there's thousands of different kinds. Um, you can tell what kind they are by the cell structures and the layout of the wings, which I think is pretty, um, pretty cool. So I'm just gonna stop talking and uh, continue to jump around this drawing and work on um, filling in my line work. And it does go, uh, usually I'm turning my um, paper all over the place, but I'm not going to do that today because, um, to be honest with you, I'm lazy and I don't want to have to edit this video later. I'm hoping to do it all in one take. We shall see. Sorry for my scratchy voice and the sniffles. The weather is changing and um, whenever it changes, it makes my sinuses and allergies flare up, which is no fun. Um, everybody seems to get uh, issues in the springtime, but I tend to get them in the fall. That's when everything I'm allergic to starts to kind of do its thing. And apologies for any background noise as well. I live in a duplex and um, the walls are very thin between my studio and my 
neighbor's guest bedroom, so they can't help it. Um, so we might hear some creaking and stuff going on in there. So I got, um, interested in drawing dragonflies in the past few months, um, a good, good friend of mine, Ben um, Williams, works for the Virginia Museum of Natural History, and they're doing a flight exhibit coming up in January 2022, you know, COVID pending and everything. Um, so he asked me to help with the exhibit by... Um, submitting five different drawings that involved uh, different creatures in flight. Um, and they had a story behind them about a late 18th, or I'm sorry, 19th century aeronaut, or a guy who fancies himself to be one, who creates different flying machines based on his observation of uh, five different creatures that he's observed in nature. Um, so we did a fake journal and Ben did the journal, the written portion of the journal entries and I did the sketches of his observations of these creatures and um, what these flying machines looked like and it was a lot of fun to be able to do that um, but then when I posted pictures of parts of the work I was working on I started getting tons of requests for where the dragonflies in particular so I thought I would you know just have some images worked up um, for when the opening comes around and we'll see if people like them enough to buy prints. We hope so. Um, and while it was a little stressful working on this exhibit, it was a lot of fun. Um, It was fun to collaborate um, with somebody else to um, actually figure out how these machines that I was essentially inventing um, for this fictional character would work. And um, I did my best to design them as if they would actually work. So that was... Um, a lot of research, more than I typically will put into um, any artwork that I'm doing. I mean, typically I will research an image if I um, want to see what the texture of something looks like or how a creature actually moves, you know, or a subject actually moves, but to um, do so much research on mechanical engineering and I guess that's what you would call it and things like that um, to be able to at least design something that in theory we would want to actually work was really fun and clearly has expounded upon my knowledge of creatures, animals that I normally would not have such knowledge of, and how they fly, um, like the dragonfly's wings, um, flap independently, and that a bat, um, flaps its wings 17 times per minute, and, um, or typically, you know, that it varies between, uh, different varieties of bats, but stuff like that was, um, really, really interesting. 
and I really like to learn. So that, uh, the whole thing was just really cool all the way around. And I said I was going to be quiet and draw. And here I am talking about myself to death. Sorry. Just thought I'd share a little bit about what I've been working on. And um, I've really wanted to do more with social media and do more with my website. And I don't know if, if what I have to share is necessarily something that other people want to know about. But I know that there are people who are really interested in my artwork. And I thought it would be cool to be able to um, explain process of what I'm doing and um, let them see kind of the reason behind it. Uh, you can like an artwork without knowing all of that, but I think that when you have knowledge of the artist and what their th thought process is and stuff like that, it can really help um, for you to understand it and get a deeper grasp and a better appreciation for it, even if you don't necessarily like an artwork. If you know what the artist's thought process is and um, why they did a thing and made it look the way that they did and um, that you could at least have an appreciation for what, what it took to make it. So that's just my thing. Um, kind of like, I'm gonna, not going to lie, I, I don't understand all... Um, super abstract works and a lot of modern artwork but I can appreciate the thought process behind it and it makes me think which is you know provoking somebody to think is probably one of the greatest things that you can do I, th I hope one day to get there <laughs> we'll see Well, I have just about gotten the wings to where I want them to be, and I'm getting to the point where I feel like I'm rambling, even though I have probably been doing that for most of the time that I've been talking. So I think I'm going to just about stop now, and I will do another video or at least an updated photograph of the completed inking in of both these little dragonflies and I will um, show you the full one at the top. I'm not crazy about the wings but you can see the top one is really cool because it's um turquoise and some gold colors so um, it will be an interesting color palette I think and then this one down here has got a lot of iridescent blues and uh, like hunter greens and stuff so it'll be neat I'm excited to start painting them um, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day and that you find some way every day to be creative